two, three, four, five. Right. <laughs> That's why you watch my channel. Burn them down. Hey everybody, it's Nicholas Rogers with the Big Timber Lodge. And if you think I own this beautiful place behind me, well, let me talk to you about some oceanfront property in Arizona that I have for sale. So you know who I'm talking to. Don't, don't be questioning the AI generated images, buddy. <laughs> Anyways, the reason why you're probably here is because you're balling on a budget and you want to be able to defend yourself in your household but you don't have a lot of money, and you still wanna be able to have fun at the range. Well, what I have in front of me might be a great option for you, and I don't know if you can tell how excited I am, but dang, did I have fun at the shooting range. I mean, I had a blast with this setup. <laughs> Zero function issues with steel gazing. And I got that thing smoking hot. Well, what exactly is this in front of me? It is the BCA BC-15. And it is chambered in 5.56 with a 1 and 8 twist and a 16 inch barrel, a proprietary flash hider from BCA. All of this comes from BCA, and you can get this complete setup for less than $500. I'm talking with this red dot optic and the 45 degree off cant iron sights, which are fantastic because if, let's say, my red dot all of a sudden doesn't work, I can just rotate, and now I'm looking straight down my irons. Now this rifle also comes with something peculiar to BCA, and that is going to be a side charging handle. So if you see where my hand is going, this is where the charging handle is. It's on your dominant hand side, right where the ejection port comes out, instead of your traditional charging handle that's here in the rear. Now, there are some features about this side charging handle that I absolutely love, and there's some that, well, it kind of caused some issues, but we'll get into that here shortly. But first up, how did it perform for my expectations? So if you would have told me that I was going to go to the range with a modern sporting rifle setup that costs less than $500, I would not have expected it to perform so well. That's amazing. So, <laughs> this optic has zero magnification. This is literally just a one-time magnification with a red dot on the, on the center. And I have one, two, three, four, five, three of my rounds are touching. That's amazing. <laughs> now, I don't know how well, it actually performed because the only optic I kept on the rifle was the optic that BCA sent with this rifle. And that is their like one-time magnification, red dot, kind of like the old military style or old aim point style red dots. Uh, do you want to see what it looks like here? Let me go ahead and show you. It's a one-time magnification. Now, if I hold this still, I can click to off and green. That's green number five, four, three, two, one, green off, and then the red five, four, three, two, one, which is where I'm shooting. That's a fairly large red dot. And the fact that I was just able to get three bullets on top of each other at 50 yards says something not only about myself as a shooter, but also about the quality of this rifle and the scope. So that's what this red dot looks like on this rifle is it the cleanest red dot absolutely not but it's not bad and the adjustments were fantastic i have to say i'm actually very impressed with the positive adjustments for the windage and elevation i'm using a screwdriver i have earplugs in with ear muffs over them so i really can't hear anything but it has a very tactile positive click with each adjustment so the dot works well, there's multiple adjustments, and the 
windage and elevation adjustments are very positive. It was very easy to make these adjustments and it didn't take me long to dial this in. All right, let's call it back. Green, I will actually say, is illuminated more than the red was. And I think the green kind of had a more of a star effect in my eyes, kind of like I have astigmatism, which I don't. Uh, but it definitely had more of a star effect, making it harder to stay on top of my target. But we'll see how I did. I mean, not bad at all, if I'm going to be honest. So that's one, two, three, four, five. All in the orange. I, I, I don't think I'm going to make any more adjustments. I think that that's about perfect. Now, what about the rifle itself? How did it perform? Well... It performed just like a modern sporting rifle, and I had no malfunctions. Now, because this video is for those of you that are balling on a budget, I went with some really cheap, like, Eastern European MFS zinc-plated steel case 223 55 grain full metal jacket ammunition. I don't even know if you could buy this stuff anymore. I bought it well over a decade ago when I was balling on a budget, and it worked perfectly in this rifle. Now, this was the first time that I shot this in the video I talk about, oh, I need to clean it in between, you know, groups because I shot five rounds. So I just cleaned the rifle. Once again, this is the first time I've ever shot this. So I want to make sure that I give it a proper break and season it. Now, before I brought it to the range, I did do a thorough cleaning of the chamber, of the barrel, of the upper receiver, and I just made sure everything was cleaned well and then lubricated to a wet standard, but not super wet. If you shoot modern sporting rifles, you'll fully understand what I'm talking about. You wanna have lubrication inside of your upper receiver so that when the bolt carrier group is moving, it's not gonna get dry and then cause a lot of friction. And then if there's a lot of debris that builds up due to the expelling gases, then you could get some sort of malfunction. This did not malfunction at all. Now, speaking of gases, I don't know if it's just the design of the upper and the lower receiver, but it could also be the side charging handle, right? The side charging handle is not coming out the rear up here. So there is no extra gap where the charging handle is around that piece of metal. And honestly, there's this little screw have a close-up look at this right here, and there's an O-ring underneath that screw. And I've gotten the most minimal amount of gases that I've ever gotten on any modern sporting rifle, including some of my very high-end rifles that I have. The least amount of gases that I've ever had was with this rifle. The trigger, I don't know. The trigger's okay, right? Like, I think I measured it in. It was around six-pound pull in my last video. I did, like, five tests with my Lyman digital scale, and it was roughly around six pounds uh, on average, which isn't a bad battle weight trigger. I was able to get what I thought was good groups with this rifle. So realistically, I'm not trying to get pinpoint accuracy with this. I just wanted to see if this would hold in a tighter group, tight enough group at 50 yards and not move its, its point of aim with a lot of shooting, right? And trust me, I put it through its paces. Not only was I shooting five shot groups off the bench, I went around or went ahead and then shot a round with two standard magazines, YouTube, two standard magazines. Don't demonetize me, please. And I shot two uh, standard magazines back to back at a rapid fire from a standing uh, position at a target at 50 yards. Functions. Second mag.
zero function issues with steel casing. And I got that thing smoking hot. And then sat down and shot a five shot group into the top of the target. And my grouping wasn't bad. Wow. Okay. All right, helmet's back. One, two, three, four, five. And <laughs> His body is riddled with holes. And, and honestly, for the price of this setup, if you're just getting into spot modern sporting rifles, or if you just want to have, let's say, a truck gun, or you work on a ranch, and you don't want to expend a lot of money on something, but you want something that's reliable and accurate and going to function for you, I couldn't recommend this more. This, this really blew me away. Now, I'm not going to get too in-depth with this overview and this review of this rifle because I only put about, I don't know, 200 rounds through it, and I want to put another about 800 rounds through this rifle and really come back and give you a nice 1,000-round review. Now, I will say there are some features that I really didn't care for. The stock, the buttstock, I mean, it's a standard military-style like M4 buttstock, but there's no padding on the rear. It didn't affect my shoulder. This thing doesn't have much recoil. The ejection pattern on this was very consistent and at that good, you know, like three o'clock to five o'clock range so that it's not over gassed, it's not under gassed. It worked very well with this 223-55 grain uh, full metal jacket ammunition. But the buttstock just kind of sucks. It feels a little flimsy. This might be something that I would actually change on it. But once again, you're getting all of this for less than $500, which blows my mind. Now, I will say, I love the charging handle, the side charging handle, because like I mentioned, it stopped a lot of the gases from escaping into my face. Plus, from a shooting standpoint, if I have this shouldered, it's easier to be able to just reach up and charge this handle versus trying to pull a handle back towards my face. So I never have to break cheek weld to get a good charge. If let's say I have a malfunction or if I put a loaded mag in, but I don't want to carry it with a loaded chamber. That makes it a lot easier. Additionally, but I'm not using this feature right now, by having a side charging handle, if let's say I'm using a scope that has multiple magnification range, let's say the three to 15 or something like that, and the, the rear of the scope is hanging out back here, where it would normally be right above the charging handle, that's no longer an issue. That was That's a great feature about the side charging handle is the fact that I can have a bigger scope on top of this rifle and if I'm in a battle situation, I'm not trying to shove my hand underneath the, belt, the rear bell of the scope to get to the charging handle. I can just go to the side and it's not going to be a problem. Now, because this side charging handle does come back like this, I couldn't have my rear iron sight back here. Just letting you know that the side charging handle does impede having anything on the rear of the pick that's going to be sticking out towards your dominant hand that'll be doing the charging. It shoots well. I'm blown away by the accuracy that I saw with this. The fact that I put in a five shot group, three bullets touching each other at 50 yards with this optic blew me away. Not just because of the quality of the gear, but also because I'm probably one of the best shooters in the world. I mean, let's be honest, you know, I might have to just register my own trigger finger as a weapon just because it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you, you leave a like if you like this video. Leave a comment. If you have experience with the BC-15 and you want people to know about your experience, let us know in the comments. That's the way that this community will grow and help one another. Also, if you just have questions about the BC-15, leave a comment and I'll answer it or maybe another viewer will be able to answer it if I can't myself. Additionally, hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications. That way, when I do the thousand round review of this rifle, you'll be notified. And if you want, go ahead and join my socials. I will have a link to all of my socials in the video description below, so you can follow me on other platforms. And also, if you want, join my Patreon, where I'll be putting some behind the scene footage for some of my videos and early access to some of my videos as well. So as, all, as always, till next time, peace.